So what are we about to do? All in all, we are here for the meaning of civic life altogether. Civic Saturday is a civic analogy to a faith gathering. However, today is not about church religion. It is about American civic religion. The creed of liberty, equality, and self-government that truly unites us all. Our theme today will focus on remembering the spark of the Albany movement in commemoration of 400 years of African American history from 1619 to 2019. We are going to center ourselves in reflection, hear poetry and song, see theater, have conversations with one another, sing together, hear civic scripture readings, texts and excerpts that examine and reveal our American creed. Reflect on civic sermons, discuss civic projects, and pray tribute to the Albany veterans who, whose brave civic actions in the 16, 19, in 1960s excuse me, held Albany's work towards achieving the American creed. Today, please enjoy. Feel free to participate fully. The gathering will proceed as printed. Thank you all for coming, and once again, enjoy. Welcome. Good morning. <clears throat> Ella Song, a poem with lyrics and music composed by Bernice Johnson Regan, a native Albanian who in the early 1960s was a founding member of SNCC's Freedom Singers in the Albany Movement. Ella Song is sung by the heritage group Sweet Honey and the Rock, of which Bernice Johnson Regan was a founder. The poem Ella sung pays homage to Ella Baker, who played a key role in civil rights organizations, including the NAACP, Slick and SNCC. This poem celebrates her life and reminds us that working for justice has always been a long-term commitment. Ella's song. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Until the killing of black men, black mothers, sons is as important as the killing of white men, white mothers, sons. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. That which touches me most is that I had the chance to work with people, passing on to others that which was passed on to me. To me, young people come first. They have the courage where we fail. And if I can but shed some light as they carry us through the gale. The older I get, the better I know that the secret of my going on it's when the reins are in the hands of the young who dare to run against the storm. Not needing to clutch for power, not needing the light just to shine on me. I need to be one in the number as we stand for tyranny, against tyranny. Struggling myself don't mean a whole lot. I've come to realize that teaching others to stand up and fight is the only way my struggle survives. I am a woman who speaks in a voice, and I must be heard. At times, I can be quite difficult. I'll bow to no man's word. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes.
My name is Future. I named myself Futurian because I have visions. I have a slave name that I'm called, but when the overseer, the master, is not around, I'm Futurian. Enslaved by the free and kind soul. Oh, you wonder why I speak the way I do? All the dishes and the dance and the tanks <coughs> for the benefit of the people who own this planet. I learned to speak like the white folks by listening to it at night. I memorized what I heard. I would listen to the read stories to the children make threw the books away. I'd get the books and then I would match the word with what I memorized. <clears throat> oh, I'm going to be church home. And the preacher was all talking about how Moses freed the children of Egypt and Egypt. And all of the slaves leaned forward to hear how he did. And just about that time, the owner stood up, stopped the minister in the middle of his sermon. Then all of us slaves back to our shacks. They carried on with church, praising God to God. We had our Moses. Yes, we had our Moses. And the many people who came south and carried us to freedom in the world. Our Moses is coming. Oh, he's coming. Get ready because he's coming. All of this, all of this, paid for with the flesh and marrow, the bones of all of our ancestors, our mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, aunts and uncles, and grandmothers and grandfathers, never knowing freedom, never had freedom. All of us, those are bones of my ancestors. Our Moses is coming, or oh, he's coming in the form of that great big old chair that many people coming south and feeding us. Listen, listen for the prison song. Sweet love, sweet chair, coming for the cat. Because he is coming. But you know, I want some of this before I leave here, before I go to heaven. I want a great big old mansion just, just like this one, right? if not this one. <laughs> yes. Our time is coming. Our time is here. Resort. Mm. <laughs> we who believe in freedom cannot rest, cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. Until the killing of black men, those black mother's sons, is as important as the killing of white men, white mother's sons. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until we come. Older I get, the better I know that the secret of my going on is when the rain lay in the hands of the young who dare to run against the star. We who believe in freedom cannot rest 
we who believe in freedom can rest until it comes. And the young people come first, they come first, they have the courage where we fail. And if I could but shed some light as they carry us through the game. We who believe in freedom can but rest. We who believe in freedom can but rest until we come. I see, I see. I'm sure that you shared some really special acts of civic engagement of everyday people, which is what makes our community strong. Thank you. Now we will have a song from Miss Kayana Jordan, Wade in the Water. Thank you so much. That was an awesome session. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, my name is Kayana Jordan, and today I will be singing Wade in the Water. But before I begin, I begin, I would like to introduce the concept of what a lot of us know as call and response music, which is tradition in African culture as well as in um, the culture that we have today in modern culture. Call and response music originated in South African culture. This form of music was used as communication for collective gatherings such as this one, religious rituals, weddings, ceremonies, and um, excuse me, and funerals. African slaves continued this tradition as they began to do to create work songs and freedom songs that we would often hear on the plantation. The song that I will be singing today, Wade in the Water, was used by the famous Harriet Tubman as a freedom song, which was, which was encoded with messages for slaves to be able to navigate themselves to the water to reach freedom. So please join in me in singing Wade in the Water if you know the response. For those of you who do not know the response, my call will be a question, and your response will be, God's gonna trouble the waters then my answer or response is going to be presented and you guys will respond with, God's going to trouble the waters. So please join in me if you know it. Um, thank you so much. Wait in the waters, wait in the waters, Children, wait, wait in the waters. God's gonna trouble the waters. Who were the children dressed in red? God's gonna trouble the waters. It must be the children that Moses led. God's gonna trouble the waters away, wait in the waters, wait in the water, children, wait, wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Who were the children dressed in white? God's gonna trouble the waters. It must be the children of the Israelites. God's gonna trouble the waters. Oh, way, way in the waters. Wait in the water, children, wait, wait in the waters. God's gonna trouble the waters. Who were the children dressed in blue? God's gonna trouble the waters. It must be the children that made it through. God's gonna trouble the waters. Wait in the waters. 
Wait in the water, children, wait, wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Thank you. That was awesome, Ms. Jackson. Let us give her another hand. Jordan, says Jackson. Public Law 115-102, established January 8, 2018, for 400 Years of African American History Commission Act. This act was enacted by both the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States Congress. Members of this commission will include a cross-section of persons re recommended from civil rights organizations, from the National Historic Museum, uh, from governors, rep recommendations, as well as the National Park Service. This commission is authorized to plan, develop, and carry out programs and activities throughout the United States that rec uh, recognize and highlight the resilience and the contributions of African American in this country since 19, uh, 1619, excuse me. To acknowledge uh, the impact of slavery and laws that enforced racial dis discrimination had on the United States to educate the public about, one, the arrival of Africans in the United States, the contributions of African Americans to the United States, encourage civic, patriotic, historical, educational, artistic, religious, economic, and other organizations throughout the United States to organize and participate in anniversary activities to expand understanding and appreciation of the significance of the arrival of Africans in the United States, the contributions of African Americans to the United States, provide a technical assistance to states, localities, and nonprofit organizations to further commemoration, to contribute uh, to African Americans in the United States to ensure that the commemoration provides lasting legacies and long-term public benefit by assisting in the development of appropriate commemoration programs to help ensure that the observances and the commemorations are inclusive and appropriately recognize the experiences of African Americans in the United States. The Commission Act further provides opportunities for grants in the amounts not to exceed $20,000 to communities and nonprofit organizations for the use uh, in developing programs that commemorate the history of African Americans, to provide grants to research and scholarly organizations for publication and distribution of information about African Americans and to provide technical assistance to the states, localities, and nonprofit organizations for our further commemoration. This law thus provides opportunities for us to commemorate the history of African Americans 400 years plus in the United States opportunities for commemoration activities across the United States, commemoration activities that will occur nationwide, and opportunities for grants to local communities and organizations. These are the advantages. Perhaps the disadvantage is that the commission 
to celebrate the 400 years of history of African Americans in the United States ends July 1, 2020, which means that we have less than a year left to continue with the celebrations. However, we do not have to be guided by the ending of the commission. We should and must continue celebrations, civic uh, Saturday celebrations of African American history. Thank you. I was part of this civic, I was part of this Sat Saturday steering committee group that attended the proclamation ceremony on this past Wednesday, October 22nd, 2019 at three o'clock p.m. in the mayor's office. It was very significant participating in the proclamation because as the new president of the reestablished Albany Doherty County branch of the NAACP, it was a major civic activity. Further, our reestablishment is an example of civic renewal that we will work to rejuvenate the spirit of the NAACP branch that was so vital to the success of the Albany movement. And now the joint proclamation reads. A joint proclamation by the mayor of the city of Albany and the chairman of the Doherty County Commission. Whereas the global community, the United States and Georgia are commemorating 400 years of African American history from 1619 to 2019. And whereas the Estes Smith Vineyard Healing Foundation Incorporated doing business as Art Triumph Historical Society for the Artesian Renaissance of Albany, Georgia, a 501c3 nonprofit whose purpose is promoting, preserving, and presenting the cultural renaissance celebration of the Artesian Renaissance, the new birth of 1619 to 2019, a new season, a new story, and a new song honoring the 400-year triumph of African American history. And whereas, in commemoration of the 1619 to 2019 quadricentennial for African American history, Art Triumph is celebrating the triumph of the Albany Movement, the civic actions undertaken during 1961 to 1962 by a coalition of African American organizations and citizens committed to the full desegregation of Albany. And whereas, Civic Saturday, a program that will be hosted in over 30 cities in the United States as a part of a citizen university, a 501c3 nonprofit in Seattle, Washington, whose purpose is fostering a renewed sense of civic responsibility and citizen participation, is being hosted by Art Triumph with the Civic Saturday Albany Steering Committee to spur civic renewal through recognizing the contributions to democracy, making, and civic life made by African Americans during this 400 year period. And whereas, to inspire civic renewal in Albany, Art Triumph with the Albany Civic Saturday Steering Committee is hosting Civic Saturday Albany 2019, the commemoration of 400 years of African American history from 1619 to 2019. Through honoring the civic spirit and action of the Albany Movement at Civic Saturday programs on October 26, 2019 and November 16, 2019. Now, therefore, we, Dorothy B. Hubbard, Mayor of the City of Albany, and Christopher C. Kohelis, Chairman of the Doherty County Commission, do hereby proclaim October the 26th, 2019, and November the 16th, 2019, as Civic Saturday Albany 2019. In Albany, and commend Art Trump, oh, excuse me, <laughs> we commend Art Triumph Historical Society for the Artesian Renaissance and the Civic Saturday Albany Steering Committee for honoring the civic legacy of the Albany Civil Rights Movement and commemoration of 400 years of African American history from 1619 to 2019. We further acknowledge your commitment to civic renewal in Albany through hosting Civic Saturday in 2019. And witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hands and caused the seals of the city of Albany and Doherty County to be affixed. Thank you. First say to our young millennials who are in the building, congratulations for accepting the torch that has been passed to you from so many who sacrificed during the Albany movement. And it is so thrilling for our Triumph Historical Society to have the opportunity to work with you. I am more than moved 
And so bear with me because this moment has been a long time a coming for the African American community. Now, Dr. Hill shared with you that while the United States government will stop celebrating next year, the celebration is forever, yes. is forever. And I think we should acknowledge that that celebration is forever. <laughs> now, as a civic seminarian, we are to come before you, not in the religious sense of the word, but in a similar way. Imagine yourself at a Sunday or even Saturday Sabbath, and the minister comes before you to deliver a very important and powerful word. When we trained in Seattle, we were to deliver a five-minute practice sermon. And most people sitting in the pews on a Sunday or a Saturday morning may very well say, that's a good thing. We should have a five-minute sermon all the time. Well, I won't be quite five minutes, but it'll be a little bit longer. But I do want to take this moment now before I move into my talk to ask us all to just pause as we witness the homegoing of the Honorable Elijah Cummings. And I won't say words because then the tears will flow and I'll lose composure. But if we would just in our hearts and mind take a few seconds to recognize his civic contributions to the United States and to the global community. Let us pause and meditate now. And thank you. The theme for today's Civic Saturday is remembering the spark of the Albany movement. Yes, I wear many hats. The instructor hat is on. How many people really know what the spark of the Albany movement was? hands. Well, Dr. Hill, we, I think that would be okay. Someone not necessarily involved in the history and the movement. Anyone else? Well, I knew persons of your, and, uh, of your stature would know. But the spark of the Albany movement begins when a group of young people arrive in Southwest Georgia. And the name of the organization is, anyone? SNCC. Yes, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. If it had not been for these brave young people, we could only imagine where Albany, Southwest Georgia, and even the United States of America in the global community where it would be. And it is our young people who have that sense of daring, challenge. They're not quite established, status quo, oh, I can't lose my job, I don't want to lose my house, I don't want to lose my reputation. But some of those young people, the Freedom Riders, do you know they had the sense of presence to prepare their wheels because they knew they may not be coming home? How many 20, 30, even say 40-year-olds do that even today? And so we are Triumph, the Lois B. Hollis Center for Social Equity, at the unsinkable Albany State University and the Civic Saturday Steering Committee of Albany have come together to 
take a moment out of the annals of time to say thank you to Reverend Sherrod, Charles Sherrod, and if you're following in your program, it is recorded as well. We have Mr. Cordell Regan, and we have Mr. Charles Jones. Now, while they were the matchsticks, if you will, they still needed something else to strike those matches against. So I will ask again, does anyone know who the, the matchbox was? We have the students at Albany State College. And they were unsinkable then too. Yes, they were unsinkable then too. Yes, yes, Miss Ola Mae Quarterman. Yes, Mrs. Okay, Miss, and, and we want to get it straight for the record. That's right. Thank you. There were many Albany State College students who would eventually participate in the movement. But before the movement officially begins, there were nine brave youngsters, youth. And the SNCC leaders kind of encouraged them, saying, hey, go down to the bus station. We have a new law. The Interstate Commerce Commission on November 1st, 1961, it was enacted that we shall have no more segregated travel or interstate travel facilities. Now let's picture ourselves. How many of us have our passports, have gone on cruises, have gone on planes and what have you? Just imagine navigating in separate facilities. Just, just take a moment. And so our United States government said, we shall not do that any longer. And these Albany State students took up that challenge and they went down to the bus station and guess what? They won. They were not arrested. And that is what really excited the community leaders, Dr. William G. Anderson and Mr. Slater King, and many of the other ones, Mr. Chapman, right across the way for the Chapman Building, and the Criterion Club, right, Dr. Hill? Right. Yes, yes. And so that spark on November 1st traveled like a lightning rod, and by November 17th, the formalized organization is founded. So we remember today that spark. And in our closing on November 16th, we'll delve more into the triumphs that emerged out of that spark. Thank you kindly for your attention. And for the civic circles to be completed, Hopefully every table, every group did receive the card that I did locate and that you've put your group decision making on there. What will happen to this information? The volunteers we have from Albany State's MPA program will drop them into our collection box. And from there, we'll hold on to them until we get the results from the November 16th, from the November 16th event. And thereafter, we will publicize the results of what this group of people said, and we'll see where the community wants to go with that. Okay. At this time, we'll have community announcements by Ms. Ashira White. Good morning, everybody. I will be doing the community announcements. My name is Ashura White. Jasmine the Quarters, the fall edition. 
Renaissance Collection Incorporated will have its fundraiser while celebrating the legacy of jazz. Sunday, October 27, 2019 at 6 o'clock p.m. $35 in advance and there will be $40 at the door. You can call 229. Everyone has pen and paper ready? Can you hear me? Huh? Okay. The, you guys can call 229-869-6589, and there will be limited seating. The next announcement is save your GA public... Um, Historically Black, uh, Black Colleges and Universities meeting Monday, October 28th at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Union Missionary Baptist Church, which the address is 214 East Oglethorpe Boulevard. The next announcement is November 1st, 2020. Harriet, the motion picture movie, explores the courageous life of underground railroad conductor and military pro proist. Prowess, I'm sorry. And the next announcement is November 5th, 2019. Elections. Exercise your civic right and your duty and honor the fight that came with getting it. So please go out and vote, you guys, this upcoming election, November 5th, 2019. The next announcement is the census 2020. Be counted and encourage your family friends, and all who are in your circle. Community resources are allocated based on the census count. So please, guys, make sure you guys fill out the, um, the census. They usually mail them to you. And um, the next announcement, Save Harlem, Save the Ritz Petition, the S-O-W-E-G-A, Rising Competition for the City of Albany to invest in revitalizing this cultural district that is the home for the significant African-American history. There is a link you guys can go to, which is www.change.org slash P slash mayor, I mean, slash Dorothy slash Hubbard slash save slash the Ritz slash save slash Harlem and that will conclude the community announcements you guys and um, thank you guys so much for coming and we hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon thank you Miss White hi I'm Katora Butler Reed and it is my honor to stand before you today because as the chapter president for the NAACP of Albany State University having this leadership opportunity is so important for the organization like Ms. Jackson, I was a part of the Civic Saturday Steering Committee group that attended the proclamation ceremony on this past Wednesday, and it, was a very, and it was very special for this organization. The tribute is dedicated to the Albany Movement veterans by our Triumph Historical Society for the Artesian Renaissance, the host organization for this year's launch of the Civic Saturday Albany. Dr. Jasmine Williams Washington, our Triumph Board of Directors Chair, presented this Scroll of Triumph for the organization virtually from her location in Jackson, Mississippi on October 25, 2019. I now present the Albany Movement veterans, family members, and organizations, the Albany Movement Scroll of Triumph. The Albany Movement Scroll of Triumph, presented by Our Triumph Historical Society for the Artesian Renaissance, written by Dr. Veronica Adams Cooper, founder and administrator. The work of the S.S. Smith Vineyard Healing Foundation, Incorporated, doing business as Our Triumph Historical Society for the Artesian Renaissance, is consecrating, commemorating, and celebrating the 400-year triumph for, of African American history from 1619 to 2019. The, to this end, the Albany Movement in Albany, Georgia is being recognized by our triumph. We consider the Albany Movement as one of the most significant and successful civic participation processes conducted towards the realization of divine democracy in the history of the United States of America. The Albany Movement was a civil rights campaign that occurred between fall 1961 through summer 1962. It was formed on November 17, 1961. The leadership consisted of Dr. William G. Anderson and Mr. Slater King, who initially served as president and vice president, respectively, Reverend Charles Sherrod, Mr. Cordell Regan, and Mr. Charles Jones, field secretaries for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, leaders of the local branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, 
I'm sorry, and student activist from Albany State College, ASC. The formation of the Albany Movement was inspired by the successful testing on November 1st, 1961 of the newly enacted ban on segregated interstate travel facilities by the Interstate Commerce Commission. SNCC, Sherrod, and Regan sent nine, nine ASC student activists to the bus station to use the whites-only waiting room. They were not arrested, sparking the zeal and momentum to formalize several weeks later. The Albany Movement served as the bridge for critical periods of the African-American struggle for full recognition of the human and civil rights in Albany and Southwest Georgia. Its landmark goal to achieve full desegregation of Albany was a watershed moment in history. These leaders, as well as concerned citizens, filled with tremendous commitment and courage, participated in mass marches, sit-ins, and protests to integrate public facilities and to register voters. By the end of the campaign, over 1,000 citizens have been arrested and or jailed for exercising their First Amendment constitutional rights. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and Reverend Ralph Abernathy, who traveled with him, were also arrested. Dr. King had been invited to participate locally with the hope of bringing greater attention to the campaign, which he succeeded in doing. Fortunately, in the long term, the brave actions of the Albany Movement participants and organizations led to the eventual full desegregation goal. In addition to the other local triumphs emerging the Albany Movement, lessons learned from this model of community organizing and citizen actions were applied by Dr. King after he left Albany. Those efforts helped lead to the passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Act and the 1965 Voting Rights Act. Now, therefore, be it known that our triumphs hosting Civic Saturday, Albany, 1619 to, to 2019 on October 26 and November 16, 2019, and presenting this scroll of triumph is to honor the civic spirit and action of the Albany movement as a defining legacy in this 400-year milestone. These expressions are dedicated to every known and unknown citizen, an organization that made contributions to the success of the Albany Movement. May you know that your sacrifice, determination, and enduring spirit of social equity or value of fairness, justice, and equality made and continues to make a positive difference for millions. In witness whereof, we sincerely thank you in humble submission Dr. Jasmine Williams Washington, Chair Our Triumph Board of Directors. At this time, Dr. Adams Cooper will come and explain the next part of the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Butler Reed, and doing very well in that transition of the program where we now say thank you to those who are present who were part of the movement. Um, some have passed on and have family representatives. And so we're going to we're going to ask the members of the families and the veterans. <clears throat> Excuse me. To please stand. And Shiloh. <laughs> Thank you. And as you've taken your seat, we we wanted you to um, stand and to participate in the roll call of honor. We want you to come to the front. Um, so we'll say it in this manner. First, for movement members who are with us, if you would come and share who you are and the role that you played briefly. Then we'll have members who have passed on one family representative to come forward. And then we'll ask for our Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church to have the ranking officer present to come. 
and then we'll ask for any others who we have not had an opportunity to know that you were part of the movement and you believe that you should be recognized today. In so doing, we're going to have our NAACP leaders from the campus and in the community who also have part of the tribute as well. And so for the roll call to begin, Ms. Mrs. Lula George and Ms. West, Ms. Marlene Edwards, Representing the family of the late Miss Evelyn Annette Pony. If you would move off okay. the okay. Wow, I am in awe right now. Thank you all so much. At this time, we have for you a personal scroll of triumph where you will be able to sign your name in one of those three roles. Ms. Jackson, will you present the scrolls? All right, once everyone has been bestowed a scroll, I will ask you all to stand with me. All right, congratulations for fighting a good fight, a civic fight. You're an inspiration for us to renew our commitment to a strong democracy and citizen role. We invite you to stay up here to sing with us, lift every voice and sing. And you may go back to your seats if you wish. <laughs> 